Hey everybody, uh, Complete Pete back again. Uh, today I want to uh, talk about a new rifle kit I just got. Um, it's the Kibler Colonial Rifle Kit. Uh, we're going to do a little unboxing so you can see what's in there. I'm hoping to take some very detailed um, video of it so you can see close up the, uh, all the features that Jim Kibler uh, puts into these things. I think I've been talking to Jim Kibler on and off uh, along with Catherine and Lori in the office for probably three years. Um, that's a lot of chit chat for a guy who's never bought anything from them. And they're always very gracious answering my questions. One of the things I really like about uh, Jim Kibler is that um, he's a very detailed guy. And, and, and so am I. Uh, if I ask 10 questions, Jim returns my email with uh, 10 bullet points and 10 answers to all 10 of my questions. He's not one of those folks that reads the first question, gives you that answer, and then leaves the other nine hanging out there. And that kind of detail translates into everything he does. Um, I, I really can't say enough about uh, Jim Kibler's company. I, I'm really impressed with it. And for a guy who's a very talented uh, machinist to be able to turn uh, you know, uh, something he's interested in, in into a passion and, and get to work on that every day, I think that's great. I, I wish I could do something like that. Um, I would mention that the, um, the Kibler uh, colonial rifle and also the southern uh, mountain rifle uh, kit are, are kits. Um, this isn't going to be a build for me. I'm not a builder. I think I have probably uh, have the utmost respect for people who really build flintlock rifles. Um, it, that really takes some skill which I don't have and that's one of the reasons I went with the Kibler kit. Um, you know I'm an electrician by trade and just because I know how to put a faucet in doesn't mean I'm, I'm a plumber. So I, I know my limitations and I give props to those who've uh, put the time in and earned it. So this Colonial Rifle Kit is modeled after a 1760s, 1770s kind of time frame. You've probably seen them on the internet. If you're watching this video, I won't bore you with details about the rifle and specifications because if you're watching this video, you just want to learn more about um, um, the rifle, what it looks like in the box when it comes out. Uh, things like that. Um, for myself, I, I didn't want a rifle kit that I had to do a lot of woodworking on. I didn't want to spend six months trying to chisel some octagon shape into some chunk of wood. I did not want to do uh, like cutting dovetails into a barrel, though I think it's very interesting. I'm, I'm not there yet. I didn't want to be drilling through the stock into some hidden tenon or pin inside. Uh, I didn't want to do a lot of really heavy parts fitting. Uh, I didn't want to, uh, you know, get into any of that stuff, just because I'm not that sure of myself yet. But uh, what I, I did get everything I was looking for in the Kibler kit, because I get to do some woodworking well within my skill level. I'm saying I haven't started yet, so I'm sure something horrible could happen. Uh, you know, the, the amount of metal working it appears that you have to do is well within my scope of work. Some draw filing on the barrel, things like that. So my goal is to uncrate this rifle and take a close look at the components inside and like I said, hopefully some close-ups and things like that. Uh, I went with the 50 caliber uh, Colonial rifle because I have other rifles that are 50 caliber. I know there's some, been a lot of discussion about the weight. The 50 is supposed to be a lot heavier than some other sizes. But what I found that the 50 is uh, supposed to be 9 pounds, 10 ounces. The, um, the 54 caliber is 9 pounds, 5 ounces. And the 58 caliber is like 9 pounds and like a hair. So not really a big difference. I was a little concerned about that when people started talking about, oh, the weight of the 50. But really a few ounces is, is not going to uh, make any difference uh, to me. So. Uh, just give me a minute. I'm going to change some things around, and I will get this. Uh, we'll get this box opened. Just as a little uh, warning, there are a couple of extra items in the box that don't come with the kit, and I'll point that out to you so uh, you know that ahead of time. Okay, everyone. This is the uh, this is the Kibler crate, the famous Kibler crate that you hear so much about that everyone recognizes. It's a really nicely built crate, which is uh, a credit to Jim. I know this is probably one more thing for him to to do uh, in his busy day, uh, having this made. It's a nice sturdy crate, easily recognizable. Uh, it has a uh, you know made in the USA. It's got a please handle with care fragile sticker on it, 
and of course I noticed right away that it had some size 12 footprints so somebody was standing on top of my rifle uh, you know with UPS or whatever uh, company brought this thing so uh, you know it, it's sturdy enough that somebody could stand on the box and I really appreciate that because I know Jim would make good on whatever damage was in this box I just don't want to go there I'm so happy to have my rifle I don't I don't want to deal with that stuff so I'm gonna pop the top off and uh, you know he's got some Phillips screws in there you've probably seen this before I did in all full disclosure I did take a quick peek I couldn't help myself I have a problem I had to look in the box so but I just looked a little bit Okay. And this is it. That's everything in the box. You can see how Jim has everything. He has little blocks in there. I mean, he has this. I mean, Jim's packaging is as detailed as everything Jim does. So I'm not surprised by this at all. Nothing moved. Somebody stood on my rifle. No damage whatsoever. Um, one of the things you'll notice is, uh, is, is all the parts. Now you've got your ramrods here. The kit comes with one ramrod, one hickory ramrod. I ordered a couple of spares. So I'm going to sand these other ones down, and when I do the finishing, the stock finishing, I'm going to finish all the ramrods at the same time. So that's just, you know, Jim has some spare parts that I think it's really a good idea to take advantage of. So uh, if you can get some spare stuff while you're waiting, I, I would definitely do that. So you get one hickory rod with the kit. The other two are just a few bucks a piece. So I just decided to get them so I could do all my finishing at one time. That's that. You can see the stock. I went with the, uh, the extra fancy stock. I wasn't going to. My wife convinced me. Uh, I didn't know who I was talking to for a minute, but she... I recognized her and she said spend extra money so I'm not quite sure what happened but I don't want to upset her so I just spent the extra money. And you can see this whole stock is all CNC machined. You can see all the pinholes are already drilled through for me. This is something I was scared to death to work on. Um, you can see where the inlet pipes are going to go. Uh, there might just be a little bit of uh, cleanup in here, but the tiniest little bit. Uh, you can see where the trigger assembly goes. Might just need a little bit of cleanup in here. Uh, you can see some of the machining marks that have to get sanded off. It got some really nice curl in the stock. Um, and that's the one side. Let me flip it over for you. Here's the other side. So I went with the patch box option and um, I'm happy I did. And you can, as you see, move up here, you can see where the lock assembly uh, looks pretty clean. I don't think there's really too much work that has to be done in there, maybe just a hair. Um, again, all the pins are done for me already. A few little machining marks from the process. But this, this work is beautiful, and I'm, I'm so happy with this stock, and I can't wait to start working on it. This happens to be a Green Mountain, Kibler Green Mountain 50 cal, one in 70 twist. You can see that one of my fears was putting in the tenons. The tenons are already put in place for me, all down the bottom of the barrel. So this is something I was worried about having to file this out and put those in myself on the other side of the barrel and you can see it's a swamped barrel so it's it's fatter at the end it tapers in the center and it gets fatter at the end again so that's going to give me a little bit of weight savings it'll be kind of period correct uh, you can see that Jim has already milled in the dovetails uh, so these are the this is another thing you know again with the underlugs I was also kind of dreading putting in you know the uh, the dovetails but you can see that when he ran the mill through there's a little bit of a, a little edge there that has to get cleaned off 
there might be some work I might have to do with a safe file in there. And we can discuss that later. Um, the one thing I did notice on the barrel is that there are some, uh, some very fine machining marks on the barrel. You can see some very fine lines where they machine this, um, if the camera can pick that up or not. So there's going to be requiring some draw filing on this. So we'll be doing some draw filing, and I think this thing should come out pretty well uh, when all is said and done. The other thing that comes in the kit, this is your parts box. You can see this does not come with the kit. These are some extra flints that I bought from Jim. So this, is, this is, goes in my extra pile. Uh, this is an extra patch box spring, patch box screw, and, this is go and there's actually a, another white lightning uh, liner, a spare uh, touch hole uh, liner. And this is the tip for the, uh, for the hickory rod. So I bought a couple of extra parts and that's also gonna go in my extra pile. The stuff that you do get is you're gonna get the, uh, you're gonna get the butt plate. And you can see on the butt plate here, um, it's all brass. We're gonna have to just do a little bit of filing here a little bit of cleanup on this parting line. Uh, you know, a little bit on top, a little, little bit right there, really nothing in here. This is really a nice piece and it really fits like a glove on there. And you can see it has the notch for the patch box cover uh, to go in also. So this is really a nice piece. Um, you have your you have a uh, parts bag with your uh, entry tubes, you have your side plate, you have all your screws and hardware. Uh, you have everything you need. You have your sights in there, uh, the trigger plate, every, everything's in the bag, uh, and, and everything's in there because I checked. Then you have your trigger guard, so a little bit of sanding on there. We're going to do a little filing, get rid of this parting line. We're going to do some polishing and sanding. Um, you know, these tabs will fit right up into the stock and we'll be drilling right through, but I don't have to agonize over that because the holes are already there. I just have to drill through them. Um, this is really a nice, a nice piece. So this is where the, the work comes in. I'm not afraid of this stuff. I was afraid of like really heavy woodworking, heavy metal working, things like that. So this is really going to give me a nice uh, start that I can be comfortable working on that. Um, the other thing, of course, is the lock. And not only does Jim CNC machine the whole stock for you, he also makes the lock. And of course, you know, he's wrapping it up in, in uh, protective uh, anti-rust corrosion resistant paper. That's, a, that's a pretty, another pretty nice uh, Jim Kibler touch because Jim thinks of all the details. Here's the lock designed by Jim. And you can see some lines on here, some machining marks. So we'll do a little cleaning. This is all going to come apart. So we'll do a little bit of sanding and cleaning on here. Uh, it comes with a piece of leather, it comes with a flint already in it. Um, you can see the back side. You can see all the components on there. This is all Jim Kibler uh, design. And you can see the, I mean, right down to the, uh, the main spring. I mean, look at the relief, relief machining on the spring. I mean, he really went into a lot of detail on this thing. And of course, it's got Jim Kibler uh, QC approval before it came to me. So I haven't, I haven't made any sparks yet because I didn't want to open it too far. Uh, so that's the all important lock. Um, I also asked Jim to send me some maple scraps, not included in the kit, of course. Jim glues everything into the box, so I just have to snap these apart. This is just some scrap maple. Um, because I'm not sure how I'm going to finish the stock yet since I'm not really that comfortable with wood chisels and things like that yet. I wanted something of the similar material uh, to practice on. Uh, you know, if you wanted something to kind of practice with on, you do have a couple pieces of maple that are in the, in the box that you could, you could unscrew and you could use those. So I just want to get the feel for what maple feels like with the chisels and things like that. So Jim just throw them in for me and I, I appreciate that. The other thing I have uh, the kit comes with is the, uh, you're going to have the, uh, the patch box cover. Not open this yet. 
There's the patch box cover. Lots of nice curl in there, so that'll that'll match. It's all completely machined out. There's a spot where the uh, the spring goes. So this is a really nice piece. Um, I know there's a little bit of fitting to make this work 100%, um, and not trusting my future self. Um, I purchased a second one in, in the matching wood, extra fancy maple, and these things are like dirt cheap. I mean, if this thing, this thing's just like, you know, it's like 13, 14 bucks or something for a spare, a spare lid and a spare spring. So I figured, you know what, in case I make something up, I don't want to have to go back and get other parts. So I, I ordered a spare for myself. Something else uh, extra that I asked uh, Jim for. Um, I got myself the Kibler Long Rifle, the Iron Nitrate Gunstock Stain. So that is something, that's what I'm going to be finishing my stock with. So this is the uh, the product that Jim uses on his own on his own rifles uh, when he's looking to, uh, especially for maple. Uh, something else he gave me in here is uh, tannic acid. If I wanted to go a little darker on the uh, stock, of course this must be a child safe uh, Ziploc bag here. Kibler Long Rifle Tannic Acid. This uh, mixed with water is the first coat, could be the first coat on the stock. Then you follow it with the iron nitrate. So once you get that done, then it gives you a darker, uh, darker look. And I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go, and that's what the scrap uh, maple is for. They also threw in a couple of uh, information sheets about the iron nitrate uh, stock stain, how to use it, what your stock could look like once you're using it. Um, they also threw in a thing about the tannic acid and what your stock will look like with the tannic acid. And they also gave me a, uh, an instruction pack. And you do, Jim has some really good uh, videos on, on YouTube. I'm going to start, I'm going to build this thing and I, I, might, uh, I might film some of it. But really, I'm going to be spending my time watching Jim Kibler's videos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the manual. I'm going to give it a shot, but I'm going to watch all those videos because he's really the master at putting these things together. So I think that's everything that comes in the kit. You got to see a couple of the extra things that I ordered just to save some time. And um, I'm really looking forward to put it together. Hoping to video some of it if, if anyone's interested. I know there's, uh, there's a bunch of people building these rifles and just maybe my take on it's a little bit different. So anyway, um, if you like the video, please click like. Uh, please subscribe if you want to uh, follow along with my project or you have any questions or comments. And other than that, I will see you next time.